Hey there, Eli here, and today we're going to zero in on the monster and guard class of enemy in the Sanctum. Some guards have special attacks that they'll only do after being damaged and typically after they've put their basic attacks on cooldown. If you happen to have acquired the original Sin Challenge Relic and want to give it a shot, this video is going to help you get there. For those of you following along my other videos, you know we talked about guards in the last one along with bosses. But let's cover two important things. Guards and monsters, like traps and bosses, inflict damage to both your resolve and inspiration as well as your hit points and energy shield. That was the one mistake I was able to find in my previous video where I'd said that guards, monsters, and traps hit your resolve and inspiration and not your actual health pool. This is incorrect. Everything hits your health pool. And secondly, guard aggro radius is farther than your screen. That's right. They have off-screen aggro, and what's worse, some of them have attacks that you won't see until they're flying at you. Sound unfair? It is. Now we'll get to a more in-depth look at all of the guards and monsters in the Sanctum. But first I want to talk about the most egregious offenders of the off-screen aggro. My top three offenders are the Deadly Blade Dancer, Undying Archmage, and Templar Marksman. As you can see here, the Blade Dancer has a blink strike attack that you can begin off-screen and suddenly he's on top of you swinging. The safest method to avoid the blink strike is use an instantaneous movement skill like Frost Blink towards or to either side of the direction the Blade Dancer is coming from. With the Templar Marksman, he can do his rolling shot or regular shot. Both of these fire off a fast moving arrow that can catch you off guard in a variety of scenarios, even in this tame example when there's nothing else going on. The Undying Archmage has a medium range multi-hitting lightning attack that if you aren't careful in your approach, he'll blast you with. Typically, he's gonna start his moveset by summoning these three orbs, but remember, their aggro radius is large, so he may be summoning these orbs just outside of your sight and be preparing to use his mid-range attack, which will punish you for walking straight at him. Special mention the Infernal Sentinel. This guy's charge up multi-projectile attack procs when you're at distance, and where are you when you first aggro him? At distance. So the next question is, how do we avoid getting hit while also getting into range? Well, there's two primary methods of approaching guards in the Sanctum. The angled approach and utilizing hard cover. As we progress through to higher floors, we're more often put in positions where we have less than adequate hard cover, so becoming comfortable with angled movement to approach guards is paramount to our success. I've mentioned it before, but I want to make a point of it here. Instantaneous movement skills are your absolute best friend bar none in the Sanctum. Flame Dash and Frost Blink are excellent choices for any character. Skills like Shield Charge, Leap Slam, Whirling Blades, these all physically move through the space between your start and finish, which means you'll take damage from projectiles and attacks that you move through. So what's the angled approach? Just like it sounds, we determine where the enemy is, which the game tries to tell you by this lightened area of ground beneath them, and approach using a movement skill at an angle left or right of them. This helps us avoid Blade Dancer's Blink Strike, should completely avoid the Undying Archmage's Lightning Tickle attack and the Marksman's Shot. It also keeps us safer against other stray attacks that could be coming at us like the Infernal Sentinel's multi-projectile. Part of the balance of the Sanctum, something we typically only see in boss fights, is this notion of identifiable attack patterns in a reasonably readable pattern. Like most bosses in Path of Exile, running circles around them, getting behind them, these put us in very strong positions. I know in a vacuum this is pretty obvious, but remembering the advantages we have, simple or otherwise, in the heat of the moment is what saves runs. Okay, let's analyze these guards and monsters in some detail. The Obsidian Sentinel's primary attack pattern is Teleport Slam, Teleport Slam, Teleport Slam, Lay Traps. Now if you've dealt any damage to him, and are within melee range of him when he's ready to begin his attack animation, he'll replace one of these Teleport Slam attacks with a special move that looks like a normal melee attack, but instead summons a line in your direction that detonates like so. His attack patterns are easy to see and the traps will either detonate 10 seconds after being summoned or after you run over them. The Deathly Archmage likes to be at a medium range. His attack pattern rotates between this long charge up straight line frost attack and a delayed summoning of these icicles that land at the position you were in when he began his attack animation. If you get into melee-ish range with him though, he'll do a wind up, jump into the air, and drop down into an AoE slam. His special move after you damage him is that he'll float into the air after a short charge up 
and summon a long line of icicles that will absolutely wreck your day if you were to run straight away from him or towards him. The icicles he summons move in the direction that's towards him, not away. Safest place you can be is behind him when he uses this. The Crimson Archmage is your typical fire mage. He has three attacks that I've been able to suss out of him with no special move. At range, he'll rotate between a regular three projectile fireball attack that has a medium range and a triple hit AoE explosion that has a highly visible charge up animation warning you to get the hell out of there. He'll also raise his scepter and summon five slow-ish moving fire circles that will bounce around after colliding with objects and expire after about four seconds. Now, I've heard rumor that maybe he has a fourth attack, some kind of flame dash type thing, but after spending quite a bit of time with him and getting to know him real well, this is all I've seen. So if you've seen a fourth attack, send me proof on Discord, please. The Templar Marksman technically has three moves, though two are very similar. One is your basic ranged attack with a fast moving projectile. The other is a dodge and roll into basic ranged attack with a fast moving projectile. It's a simple attack, but it can plink you if you're not ready for it. His third move, once he's damaged, is a two-parter. One to summon his signal flare, which he'll drop down, and the other is to activate it with this red flare type thing on himself. Once activated, the rain of arrows around that area that he landed his signal flare lasts about seven seconds. And it's a decent amount of space that it denies, so be careful about leaving this guy alive. Infernal Sentinel. This guy has four attacks that he can cycle through whether he's taken damage or not. One's an expected regular melee attack if you're in melee range. Another is a charge up straight line medium range flame strike. Another is where he summons four flaming shield dudes, two on either side of him to walk slowly at you. And for those of you trying to do an original sin run, the most dangerous one is a stationary charge up that slings seven projectiles in a cone in the direction you were when he started the animation. Terrain cover is your friend if you can't get behind him quickly. The Azor Assassin has three moves and no special move. If you stay at range, he'll attack you with a long charge up basic arrow attack. And if his floaty blue lightning cloud isn't down, he'll charge up a slower moving arrow that stops after it travels about half a screen's distance and detonate, turning into a slow moving lightning cloud that serves to deny space. You can see this particular move by noticing this lightning charge up around him while you're at range. If you get close range, he'll charge up with a lightning thing around him as well for a short range conal lightning blast. And fun fact about this guy, he's the only one I've found that glitches out a little bit. If you see here, the arrow kind of goes into the wall, and when it goes to detonate, it teleports back either to him or to me. I'm not quite sure, so be careful of this. The Deadly Blade Dancer only has two attacks. He has a normal wide swing slash and a teleport blink strike. The thing to keep in mind with this guy is that he can hit you off to his side, but the trick to dealing with his blink strike is to use a movement skill towards him to either side or far enough away. I typically teleport towards him, and so long as you do this during his charge up animation, you will avoid the attack. The Entombing Warden has two attacks. One is a charge up that does a short duration rain of arrows that lands where you were when his arrow shoots up into the air. The other is this visibly distracting, otherwise regular arrow attack. The arrow travels pretty quickly, but the point of his attack is to distract you, so don't let it. Use the animation to warn you how much time you have before he fires. Undying Archmage. This guy has to die. He's a top tier guard and the longer he's allowed to live, the more chaos he introduces into your fights. He has four attacks. First up, he summons three floating orbs around him. These orbs blow up if you move over them, but if you don't, they'll wander around, eventually pick a spot, and all the while periodically shoot blue bolts at you. The same way the Archmage does for his basic attack. Next up is this medium range multi-hitting lightning tickle. This guy is the reason we approach with instant teleport skills at an angle. It dodges any projectiles coming straight at us and dodges this tickle attack. Lastly, he has this little charge up which precedes a random ground flame special. It's deceivingly strong because the animation isn't super obvious. Neither is the flame that comes up from the ground. So if you aren't familiar with this charge up animation, you might not see it coming before it hits you. Masked Combatant. This guy will blink to you with a smoke bomb and periodically throw out little mines that explode on their own after about five seconds or shortly after you walk over them. Once hit, he'll create two mirror images of himself that also smoke bomb blink to you, which blinds you while you're in the cloud, 
and also throws out mines. The images last about three seconds. He's here mostly to confuse you and hope you don't notice the mines laying on the ground. If your character creates a bunch of ground effects like consecrated ground for instance, make sure you wait until those clear up before going to loot that coin. Okay, that's the guards. Let's cover the monsters. The Harrowed Wraith monster has two moves, a long charge up, long range ice path, and a close-ish range slash attack. Be careful about this slash attack though because it leaves behind images of itself that detonate after a moment. Be sure to watch how his delayed regular range attack works here and note when it actually locks on to your position. The Shambling Goliath has three moves, a melee attack, which is super slow, a ground stomp that hits in a medium-ish sized cone in front of itself, and this interesting little hit that throws out orbs of blood before he detonates them with a punch. Easily maneuvered around, just make sure you notice the slow guy dressed in all gray. The stalking Geist cycles between two hits. He'll run up to you and do a slash, and after every third attempt or so, He'll do a charge up, long range, distance closing slash. He only appears to do this if you're at non melee distance and it goes on cooldown for a little bit after that. The Infernal Harpy has two moves. Toss this little molten bomb that bounces once and disappears, and this other little slow slash attack. There's not much to say about this guy. The Noxious Scavenger is a sneaky boy. He can be a little tough to see on certain tile sets in here, and he moves pretty quick. Fortunately, he doesn't attack very fast. He's only got a normal slash that has a long wind up and this breath attack that also has a very long wind up and short range. He also has this gap closer jump, but it doesn't do any damage. See? The Decaying Lithomancer is the Lithomancer boss's child with a fraction of the boss's moveset. He's got two attacks. Summon this floating friendly rock that explodes when you jump on it or detonates after a time and a charge up three hit green bolt. Interesting note about this attack, if you stand on him while he's casting it, the bolts will fire off in three different directions. A little spooky, but he's awful slow about it. If someone you know is about to embark on the original Sin challenge, make sure you send them this video first. And that's it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Glad to have you here. Keep an eye out for the next video. And this is Eli signing off.